Welcome to Unleashed, where MMA icon and power wrestling titan Dan the Beast Severn and Eric Carroll deliver a knockout punch of raw, unfiltered talk. Unleashed. Gear up. Gear up. It's Beast Mode. Jay, Dan Severn here. It's been a while since you last see me. Uh, the last time I was donning dark hair, dark mustache, but most people don't realize that throughout my entire professional career, throughout my entire cage fighting career, that was called Just for Men number 45. <laughs> <laughs> so, was it? <laughs> was it? Why'd you stop using it? Well, I mean, just, you know, once the, uh, when the, once the pandemic kind of hit, and you, you know, people couldn't go anywhere. Could I mean, just people just could go any place, and you really couldn't get things. And it's kind of like going my hair. I actually, I had had that full beard on the whole nine yards. I just shaved the beard off. I go, you know, it is what it is. I, I mean, I'm I'm 65. I mean, most people don't realize how old I am, but I'm 65. It's kind of like going, you know, I, at least I have some hair yet the the, the comb, you know. So just but, don't ever shave the mustache, man. Well, no, 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 no. no. The, the mustache never. stays. The mustache I agree. No, stays. Never, <laughs> never stays. Well, that's why I look at it this way, there, Jay. I, I can, if I, if there's different movie roles or commercials stuff like that, I can shoot. I can color my hair whatever color they want it for at that point. Time, right. you know, at least I got something to do. I'll even heck, I'll even shave my head if that's what if it's a good enough commercial. Well, you know what? If you ever want to go in disguise incognito, you ever want to be left alone, just shave the mustache off. Nobody well, have a clue yeah. who you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, again, I, I, I guarantee you, you'd never recognize like Don Fry, especially there, because he's. That's what I said. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, man, have you ever uh, fought Don Fry? No, 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 no. Actually, Don was one of my wrestlers when uh, when I was coaching at Arizona State University. He lived with a couple of my younger brothers, so I, I know Don much like a younger brother. I mean, it was there was one point in time UFC was trying to put something together. And Don's like, no, no. I go, I go, Don, go with the go with the flow. See what kind of money's there first, you know. So never, <laughs> never say never, okay? <laughs> hey, uh, I had another question for you. And, and uh you might not want to answer this, but I just out of curiosity, all the fights you had back in Japan, have you ever thrown a fight? You know what I mean? Like what, um, what, I know what, that the, Pride was, was used to be big on that or something. There was uh, and, well, and the promotion before Pride actually, um, what was it called? That's a good they question. were doing a, they were doing a lot of work work fights too. Yeah, no, I mean in, in Pride itself, no, I I only had only I think only a couple of fights ever in Pride, and mine were just straight up, just you know they gave me a, a head price and you know I went out there and just just did that. Um, the like the the professional wrestling company that I work for. The UWFI, that was a work shoot total concept. I mean, it was a very, very stiff work uh, yeah. to where they wore shin pads. And he, the premise was if they threw a, uh, like a leg kick or something, they hit you in a thigh leg or, or your, your waist or even you know, they would go for headshots, stuff like that. If they did not make contact, you did not sell it. That was the whole premise yeah. that you didn't, you had to actually had to feel it. In order to sell it, so it was. weren't weren't, weren't some of the matches uh work back then though? Like well, some some were shoots and some were well, work. And that promotion, you gotta realize most most of those most of those companies are are kind of like controlled by uh mafia, <laughs> the yakuza. Oh, yeah. So some stories there. Well, again, I I can't say much for. I mean, I, I I'm pretty sure that the, the companies I work for they were probably um being bankrolled by the yakuza as well. Again, I, yeah. I I went out I went went out to a couple different dinners. I mean, they were. Very pleasant uh, businessmen to sit there and dine with. I just glad that they, yeah. they like me. That's all. <laughs> to take you out and buy you dinner and show yes. you a good time yes. and, and want to be seen around town with you. Yeah, no, no, no. no yeah, you're no. exactly right. They just said they like to be seen with 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 people from that that type of an industry industry and that. And uh, you know, like I said, it, it's just been it's been just kind of an interesting life for me in, in just a lot of different ways. But let's come back to you. I I, I want to learn more about how in the heck did you ever come up with this uh, this whole insane clown posse and and how, how did this come to fruition because you guys had to have all kinds of wacky hurdles uh, to come with and because I've, I've actually <laughs> been to a couple of the 
the gatherings. Okay, the, yeah, the, 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 right, the right words. A couple of the gatherings, and uh, mm -hmm. and, and even then. To, to pick up this piece of real estate and all that, I, I got a, a bunch of questions on that, so I don't even know where to begin. Let, let's just begin. <laughs> well, you know, we come from basically um, pro wrestling, honestly. Like, um, when we were kids, we had a backyard wrestling, you know what I mean? And we had, um, we had, um, uh, you know, we knew we were going to be wrestlers one day. It, it wasn't a, a goal or a um, dream or anything. We knew. We knew. <laughs> and, um, so we, um, by the time we turned 19, though, that dream started to change into hip hop. You know what I mean? So uh -huh. you can see by what we become, we're a product of pro wrestling. I mean, like, you know, yeah. look at us. We're characters. We're gimmicks. You know what I mean? But that, that type of uh, fanhood growing up it, uh, heavily spilled into what we end up doing in music. <laughs> that type of showmanship. You know what I mean? Well, no, it, it, I mean, everyone, everyone's trying to create. Uh, like a different uh, look for themselves. I mean, and you guys definitely carved out a very unique uh, look for yourself because it kept people. People kept thinking. I mean, other than only other person that was really you. You might have like a Japanese kabuto or something like that that might be coming in with the WWE or WWF at the time. Just all depends on what what time frame. Um, but you really didn't have anyone that was um, you know doing. I mean, I think very unique with what you guys were doing with the whole music. Chandra and uh, and then being professional wrestlers on top of that. Yeah, I'm, I mean, um, it's been a, it's been a, a huge blessing because when we got into wrestling later, after we had success in music, man, we were wrestling the very guys we used to get their autographs from coming out of the arenas. You know what yeah. I mean? It was unreal, and, and I never felt at home in wrestling the way we did on stage. You know what I mean? with music. I, I, I was always more in awe of wrestling. And even though we spent a considerable amount of time in wrestling and run our own promotion, I still look at it as a fan and I'll never consider myself part of the industry because um, we could never be that type of athletic guy. Well, Joe, Joe, Shaggy was really good in the ring, but I could, I could, I was always blown up in two seconds. <laughs> and, and I just, I just admired all the guys so much, you know, and um, we never felt at home. But on stage, that's that's far more. We feel like that's far more our domain. You know what I mean? Jay, was you pretty much always a fan of pro wrestling? And like uh, growing up, who was your favorite wrestler? The favorite, my favorite wrestler to watch was Andre the Giant because he was just okay. a spectacle. You know what I mean? Th that goes live and and on TV. You know, and another favorite of mine was the Missing Link. Because there was really nobody else like him in wrestling. He had the green makeup on, the, the piece of hair up front, and all the hair in the back. And um, he would he would wrestle a jobber and be headbutting him, and he would blade beating up a jobber. You know what I mean? From hitting him in the head, you know. And I just love that man. It, you know, so those were my two favorites. Well, again, when you when you mentioned like those kind of people, what about like a George the Animal Steel? Because when you're describing the the other guy, I kept thinking, well, well maybe George the Animal Steel kind of fell into that same. Uh, oh yeah, he's of, from he's from here. He's from uh, like a half hour up the road, up the freeway here. And um, man, he's always been a legend here. You know what I mean? He was a uh, mi uh, middle school teacher. Yeah, he was. When he, yeah, when he wasn't doing uh, WWE, you know, all those years too. He he would I guess he would tour in the summer. And then come back and work as a middle school guy, and then come back and tour in the summer. You know, his his first gig that he was doing in professional wrestling was as the title was the teacher. That's right. But but it didn't really, I guess, it really didn't get over that much. And then he started taking chair shots to the head, and then slowly <laughs> digressed <laughs> into George Yet was still to chewing on turnbuckles, and you know. <laughs> I never I, knew he that. found his niche. He found his yeah. niche, man. Oh, that's right. awesome, Again, man. He was he was a football coach and a wrestling coach. I ended up meeting him I my freshman year in high school at a at a tournament, you know. Wow, I mean, really? De decades oh, before I ever got involved in the, in the industry. Were you a big fan of pro wrestling growing I mean, up? I watched uh the again uh, go, going back to my time era, there's only basically about three networks on television. NBC, ABC, yeah. I mean, and I, mean yep. literally, I, I watch going from black and white TV to color television. So it, it's, you know, the progress we make to where now people don't even look at TVs. They look, they look at the cell phone. That's, uh, that's right. That's <laughs> the device of, of choice. 
So it's like I go back to days of, you know, grabbing the, the rabbit ears on top of the, the TV set there, put some aluminum <laughs> foil on to get, get, get better reception or, you know, I mean, whatever you could do to get better reception, stuff like that. So it was uh, yeah. comical when you when you think back at the, the times of that. But we enjoyed, we enjoyed professional wrestling, and I'll say that my parents – probably got a few pieces of broken up furniture due to it because I grab your brother to body slam him while body slam <laughs> the couch. The couch is right there. Body slam is like, you break a leg on, on the couch. I go, oh, no. Got to got to somehow <laughs> put a couple of splits or anything to block it up, you know, so you don't get caught. So, Jay, you grew up in Michigan? Yeah. I know yeah, you mentioned the Mr. Link. So was that did did you get world class up there? Was that what you was? No, but I was life? I was all over the when I was young, I was all over the magazines. And then when oh. I was a, a teenager, I was tape trading and everything. You know what I mean? You had to tape trade and everything. You know what I'm saying? And uh oh, the, the man, I remember when YouTube. I remember when YouTube came, I was like <laughs> I couldn't believe everything was on there. All the coolest tapes I had, all the coolest stuff I had was everywhere now. You know what I mean? I remember I was the coolest one in the neighborhood because I had a, a tape, a VCR tape of Prince and Michael Jackson on stage at a, together at a James Brown concert, right? Oh, I, yeah, was, yeah. I was the man for that that footage. You know what I mean? I was, I, people didn't believe me until I showed them and everything. It's nothing now. Footage is nothing anymore. You know what I mean? Oh, Everybody yeah. has everything now, you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, man. So uh, I know you did a little stint in the WWE and WCW as well. What was that like wrestling with WWE? WWE was um it was it was it was tension, I think, because um you know, like uh you know, we um <laughs> I remember we got there our first day, it was SummerSlam, and we needed at Madison Square Garden, and we needed a, a, a mirror to paint up, and they put us in the, this locker room. The only other people sitting right behind us on a bench were Undertaker and Stone Cold going over their match. You know what I mean? <laughs> and me and Shaggy are painting up like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? Like, we couldn't even believe it, you know? <laughs> we were just like, this is crazy. And we're, and we're debuting at the Garden. You know what I mean? This is so incredible. We couldn't believe it. Um. But I mean, WCW, was, right out of the blocks, you guys got, got that big of a push right out of the blocks. Yeah, but, well, I mean, we came out with uh, the oddities, and um, we were in their corner at the beginning before they okay. had to start wrestling. You know what I mean? Okay. What was cool was um, before they tell, tore it tell, down. Tell, tell, tell the people who the oddities were, because I, I know who they were, but tell the people who the oddities were. They had like uh, Kerrigan, or Ke yeah, Kerrigan. Um, the and stuffed the, animal. Right. John Tenta. John Tenta was yeah. as uh cart what was it, Cartman or something he went by? Yeah. And yeah. then and then um you had Giant Silva, who also did some stuff in Pride. Yeah, um yeah, yeah. you you had uh who else was with that group? Ah, uh, I can't remember the other dudes. I think name. that was it, man. I think it was like three of yeah, my members. It was, it was, it was a kind of very small delegation that they had in, in, in the the oddities right there. But okay, first no, they yeah. had uh, first they had George Animal Steel with the oddities. Did they really? Yeah, and then when he stopped being with them, we started being with them. You know what I mean? I remember our first, our first match in WWF. They were like, um, "All right, look, don't appear, don't wrestle." We want you guys to be fighters. Just bite, claw, don't try any wrestling moves. You guys are a rap group. Be that. You know what I mean? We're like, okay. We went out there, man. We started wrestling the shit out of those guys. <laughs> Everything we were doing was all wrestling. We were wrestling kind time. And uh, Shaggy went to the top rope for a leg drop. You should have seen the look on the guy's face. He was like, ah, because <laughs> none of it. We weren't supposed to do any of that. You know what I mean? But we were like, man, they're putting this to the match. We're going for it. You know? <laughs> and we had a great time, man. They didn't say nothing about it afterward or nothing. Everybody was like, cool, cool. You know what I mean? Did, but did, yeah. you guys, did you guys at least have a ring or something like that that you've trained in back home or something? Or did you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we built a ring in our backyard as okay. kids. And it, it, it was sturdy. You had four railroad posts pounded into the mud. We had garden holes around. You could go off the ropes. But when, um, when we started becoming... When we made some money in music, basically, first thing we bought was a wrestling ring. <laughs> so we had a ring in our warehouse way before we went to WWE. You know what I mean? And, and um, we were uh, we would have uh, an hour long match with each other every day at lunch. You know what I mean? 
wow. get in the ring and just just go for the whole hour. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, and uh, we we loved it at that point in our lives, man. You know what I mean? We were all about it. Yeah. Around what, what year did the music career really take off, Jay? Um, it really took off in '97. That was our first platinum album. Was you know, that the, great and the Great Malenko. Yep, yep. That was our first platinum album, and uh, we went to WWE in '99. You know, which is crazy because we put all that energy toward knowing we were going to be wrestlers, right? All those years when we were young, knowing it. And um, even though we switched our dream and began pursuing our hip-hop dream, because we put all that positive energy into that, that first dream, it was offered to us on a platter later. Like when we got a call from WWE, they were like, hey, we want you guys to make the ring music for this team we called the Oddities, you know? And we were like, do you do y'all know we wrestle? <laughs> and they were like, what? And we were like, we wrestle, man. So they flew us to uh, Stanford, and we, we we went to the headquarters, and we wrestled. We, we did some uh, bumping with Tom Pritchard, and um, they filmed it. Next thing you know, we were there, man. We were at SummerSlam wow. debuting. It was awesome, man. How was the reaction from your, your fan base uh, with the wrestling versus the hip-hop? Did it mesh really well, or did you have some that's like, I don't get into pro wrestling? I was just curious about that. Oh, yeah, we got a lot of fans that aren't into wrestling, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but the ones that are loved it, you know what I mean? I mean, they loved it. It's another chance to, to get to see us doing something, you know? Plus, no, back then, nobody knew we had any wrestling skills at all. Nobody knew we, we ever – do anything about it you know so to see us in the ring taking bumps like that it was cool you know because um people were like damn they're really doing it you know what i mean and, yeah. and um yeah and, and um we were man we were going all out you know and um uh in wcw though we had a lot more fun man a lot 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 more fun they were so wild over there they would be like how many people are you bringing in we'd be like six <laughs> i'd be like okay you know what i'm saying and we'd fly all our crew in every week, you know, everybody, because we'd always be on tour and everybody'd be like, Listen, I want to go We bring everybody, you know, they didn't even care, like, how many what? flights they were booking or anything, you know what I mean? And, and like, there we had so much more creative control. They were like, basically, whatever y'all want to do, you know, and we had so much fun. We met Vampiro there. We can't, we're still super cool with Vampiro, you know, and uh, we just had the best time ever in WCW, man. We actually did two runs in WCW. The first one was like three months, and then uh, we quit for a year, and then we came back for like another t probably two months. Now, well, did, did that cross? Did that cross over into the music industry? Well, because I mean, having those two different careers, did they help help each other? By doing oh, that? It, it helped. It helped, but it also uh, a lot of people, you know, looked at us. I don't think they really knew we actually had records in the stores. You get what oh. I mean? I think they thought we were just like a, a wrestling gimmick. You get what I mean? Like rapping clowns or something crazy. I don't, yeah, I don't think yeah. a lot of fans actually understood that we were actually, you know, at the time, you know what I mean? I, I, we, so we kept saying, you know, we weren't really making anything in WWE. You know what I mean? So we kept saying, look, um, we just want you to air one, our commercial on Raw. You know what I mean? That'll be everything. Like that'll let everybody know we actually have albums in the stores, you know, to say, you know, FYE, Harmony, you know, available yeah. in St. Cloud, you know, we were like, just run, run the spot, you know, on Raw, and we're good, you know, and they kept, uh, Vince Russo kept saying, yeah, for sure, we talked about, we're going to air, air it next week, you know, week after week after week after week, they wouldn't air it, so finally, uh, our manager, you know, our manager was like, look, man, you guys are flying out there every Monday, you know what I mean, and, and we're basically doing it for free, and, um, you know, we've been there and done it at that point. You know what I mean? We're like, man, they're not going to air the commercial. We're just getting played. You know what I mean? Sure, um, sure, sure. So we you know, ended it, up walking out, you know? Yeah, professionals, it, it, it's just a strange industry. Because, I mean, I, I would show up, and they have, they've got that big chalkboard, and they have all these great basic matches that are listed. But if someone's promo went too long or someone's match went too long, they just pull the eraser up, and poof, you're gone. So half the time, I just wait around to see, am I going to wrestle? Or not? Yeah. And I, if yeah. that's a match, where I go each each uh, Monday Night Raw led into their uh, monthly pay per view. So there's certain matches that had to get in because that's what all these pay per views were, were based on. When when did the property? When did you guys get this property? And you start doing like the the uh, these uh, the gathering events. The um, gathering. 
Well, it, 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 it's the property is 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 a rental, and uh, but we've been there, damn, like the last six years now, I think. But we used to we, we usually we used to move it around every year, you know, somewhere in the Midwest, and um, but we found a place that we're really really tight with everybody there, and we've been able to build built structures on the property that they keep there year round, you know what I mean? So. We're we're pretty cool where we're at. We, we might ride it out there for a while to come, but but um, well, yeah, I, man. I actually thought you guys owned that property because I kept thinking. To me, I, I looked at it's a great investment because real estate all is eventually going to go back up so at some point in time. So, oh yeah, yeah. Again, we do. If we, you want to have on board as your financial advisor right now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> tough. On, I'm, I'm pretty tough in the negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> we do we do own some property but um uh not, not nothing that we could have the gathering on you know what i mean I sure but the, the guy's a, a real cool um a uh, friend of my my managers and um you know it's it's just become such an ingrained staple there where it's at everything's so perfect i think the juggalos are familiar with it too and how to get around in town and where where they want to stay and all that so uh -huh. it's pretty cool you know what i mean we'll probably stay there for a minute so Jay, explain that to somebody that maybe ha hadn't seen you before. What is a juggalo? Well, a juggalo is, is somebody that's that's a fan of insane clown posse. You know, people always uh, juggalos are are more um, their notoriety is bigger than ICP. You know what I'm saying? Juggalos are, are what makes us matter. You know, I, I think juggalos are almost. I look at them almost like celebrities at this point like in other words if you see a group of six juggalos walking across the street people are gonna be like oh damn look at the juggalos you know what i mean like yeah. somebody recognize a group of people like that that's pretty cool you know what i mean yeah, i hope yeah. the word juggalo ends up in a dictionary one day you know what i mean that would be really cool i was thinking about that the I, would, other day. I, would, I would think that it was would be already the fact that you know i mean it's i think that it you might be i don't know i never looked <laughs> yeah. um how long have you been doing the gathering Oh man, we just had our uh we got our next not this year, but next year will be our twenty-fifth. Twenty-fifth. Yeah. Jeez. It's gonna be a big one too. It's gonna be like a big reunion of everybody coming back, you know what I mean? For the twenty-fifth. How long do those typically last? Uh it's, four it's days. It's a, yeah, like a four long, days. long weekend, right? Yeah, yeah. Four days, but for the ones that really like to party, five days. Because they come early, you know. Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday are, are the main days it's open. But people come Tuesday uh, early in, in a, um, what do you call it, tailgate, like in the, across from the grounds, you know, and that's a party in itself. Sometimes it's just as live as the, the gathering. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, um, it, it's pretty long, you know. It, it'll beat you up, man. You go home from there. It's so funny because everything that happens at the gathering, it hits the juggalo world, right? Like it hits all in online and it's all the posts and every all the new announcements go out and everything every you know every year it's like our WrestleMania right, um, but uh, when the gathering's over you don't hear shit from nobody for like a week. <laughs> nobody's posting, nobody's doing nothing. Everybody's just recuperating. You know what I'm saying? I find it funny because I'm like, dang, we made that announcement three. You know, it's like three days after the gathering. I'm like, I can't believe it's nothing about it online. You know, all of a sudden it'll come flooding out like about a good four or five days after the gathering when everybody's done sleeping it off and getting back into the you know life. Then they start posting everything. You know, it's cool. Yeah. Well, okay. Here's here's a question for you because I, I I've been on two different occasions and you you have like I, I don't know maybe three or four different like uh, areas where events are taking place. It's like one concert is playing over over on, on, on the left side over here, and it yep. will go on for a certain time frame. And then when that ends, I think there's like just like a maybe a half hour or something like that. And then all of a sudden, at a different location, there's another either band, group, or event taking place. Because I simply knew that the night, the couple days I was there, the professional event didn't start until I think around 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and and a lot of wrestlers yeah. have, uh, you know, said a lot about that over the years. And I'm thinking, man, first of all, the whole gathering, what they don't understand is the whole gathering is nighttime. That's when everybody comes out. You know what I mean? It, it, when, yeah. During the day, it's mad hot. Everybody's sleeping. You know what I mean? Yeah. So everybody's on nighttime in, as it is, you know. The main stage don't end till midnight. Once the, That's where nothing, everything shuts down the whole gathering but the main stage. You know what I mean? 
those acts play, and then that, that's over at midnight. So by the time everybody gets settled and get, goes back or whatever gets situated, and by the time they get to wrestling, it is one in the morning. You know what I mean? Yeah. And some of these guys are like, what the hell, man? Because you know? they don't have going out until 3 in the morning or whatever. But it's a different situation, you know what I mean? And, um, well, yeah, to, man. Did, to me, to did, me, that was, was just all that was Go all ahead. part of like the, the ambiance of, of the thing. I kept thinking, well, the experience, I've never, right? I've never been at the, the juggle event before. And I, I simply knew it, it was it's actually very, very comical because as I'm pulling, as I'm driving down the road to it, it it's basically like a two-lane uh road. I mean, they had state police out there, and yeah, they, they were stopping tool. everybody and having people either got a car, pop the trunk, stuff like that. By the time I pulled up to the, the officer. I just rolled my window down. He looks at me and he simply just just waves me out like like he didn't ask for nothing. He just waves me out. Then when I finally <laughs> get to the front gate uh, to the actual this to the gas gathering, the, the the one gentleman comes out there. I mean he's got he's got long dreads and stuff like that. He's got the clipboard. He looks at me. Goes he goes he goes. He says, are you sure you're supposed to be here? I go, I, I go, look at your clipboard. I'm supposed to be coming on, I think, around 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the afternoon and uh, d- d- doing a speaking engagement. And uh, and he, he's like, wow. He goes, you are. You are. So, yeah, that didn't was like have the, you? Didn't you work um, Ken Shamrock in the, at the gathering once? In yeah, a yeah. I, I had Ken one time and, and Jimmy Jacob but another time. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, then was I was just saying, time I was brought. I I just did ref, refereeing duties at one point in time, and that was it was rather comical because these it, it was actually no actually I was refereeing Ken Shamrock and someone else, and these oh, guys. Okay. See, I, I had already been there the year before, and these guys are going over this big elaborate match, and I'm 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 just kind of kind of sitting over here rather aloof to it all because this is their <laughs> first time there, and this, this I love is, that this word number aloof. two for me. And they're going over all these spots and stuff like this. And, and they're like, Severin, are you paying attention? I mean, Ken's like, Ken's like, get down here. Severin, you paying attention? I go, Ken, I got this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was so comical because when the first guy got out there, he, he climbs up onto the top row. <laughs> he climbs on the top row to do some kind of like pose or something like this. It gets blown off the top turn. I know what you're talking about, bro. I know what you're talking about. Hold on. Was it Ultimo Dragon? Listen, Ultimo Dragon wears this beautiful yeah. ring gear. I think he's the best dressed wrestler in the, in the game. His ring gear is so immaculate. He goes up to the top rope, raises his, his uh, arms. He's got the wings under his arms, you know. And a, like a super big gulp just smacks him in the side of the head. And I was just sitting there patiently watching, and I was like, no! <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> I was so upset. I was like, "Damn!" And he's the good guy. You know? Yeah, that's that's exactly what happened during Ken's match, and, and it was so comical when when the guy got blasted off the top top a uh, rope right there. He falls down. The 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 bottles split all all over the place. And, and, like, <laughs> sticky, and, and Ken's looking at me. I I simply look right back up and go, "Welcome to the gathering." <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's walking around naked. Everybody's walking around naked. I was going to tell you, by the way, um, the reason the cop waved you in, it was the mustache. He must have figured you were one of them. When my hair is all black and stuff like that, I I, 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 I throw myself in front of that short yellow bus. I look like a cop. I look like I'm a yeah. military. I mean, I just got that look about me, so... It's, it's kept you're, me out of trouble a lot of times. You, you're what we call suspect, bro. <laughs> That's what us criminals call. <laughs> I don't know if we can trust him. <laughs> Jay, me and Dan was talking about this last weekend where he was talking about wrestling at the gathering. He said there were soda bottles going everywhere. Where did the idea of the Fago and uh, the soda bottle rockets come from? I'll tell you. Um, when when uh, Back when we were kids, Run DMC was out, right? They had yeah. Adidas. They rapped about Adidas. That was like their thing. Uh, the Beastie Boys were out. They rapped about White Castle. They used to mention White Castle sometimes yeah. a lot in their songs, you know. And uh, we were like, dang, what, what is our thing? What is our thing, you know? And everybody from Michigan knows that Fago is is the thing here. So, you know, we always had a two liter in our hand because they were only 89 cents for a two liter. We could literally walk up to the store through the alley. By the time we got there, we would have found already nine empty 
money back bottles so we could give it to the store and get the two liter. <laughs> exactly. If, 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 most people so, aren't, um, aren't going to even understand that. They're saying, you know, that there's like a, well, again, it used to be a dime, but I think it's up to 20 cents now per plastic really? bottle. I mean, the fact that you could just collect enough of them just going to get yourself a full one. Oh, totally. I didn't know they were up to 20 cents. I'm going to reinvest my time in some uh, bottle searching. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like you plenty at the gathering. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we we were on, you know, so we had, we started rapping about Fago and our lyrics, and uh, we had buckets of it on stage, you know. So one day we're doing a concert. It was right at the beginning, and uh, somebody was flipping us off, and Shaggy was taking a drink of a, of a Fago bottle at the time, a full two liter. And the guy was looking wrong, so Shaggy like uh, squirted it in, in the you know in the kid's face, right. and the whole place like exploded, you know. So then I grabbed a two liter and threw it at the kid, and then Fagos just start flying, you know what I mean? And uh, I remember this this the the, the man the lady that managed the club, she ran out and tried to grab one of the buckets of Fago, and my manager was wrestling her for it. <laughs> Meanwhile, me and Shaggy were grabbing two liters out of it. And spreading. <laughs> anyway, oh my god. So, after that, you know, we couldn't play another venue unless we um, uh, uh, secured it with uh, Saran around the monitors and all that, you know, Saran wrap or whatever, so that it, everything's waterproof, you know what I mean? But even then, it took us years to figure out that the sugar in the Fago rots the stages, you know what I mean? Oh. Like, we would leave a venue, and the sugar would sink into the wood, and the stages would start rotting and stinking and shit. So we had to switch to sugar-free. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now all the Fagos we spray are sugar-free, you know? They got Fago Zero? Like, Hook Zero? I don't sugar? know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> if they do, they call it something else. You know, people think we have some kind of investment in Fago or some kind of ownership in that. Speaking of a Fago machine, brah, that's exactly what we got out of 33 years of loyalty to Fago, helping put them on the map that gave us a Fago machine. <laughs> that's all we got. Wow. <laughs> they really went out on a limb there for you. <laughs> they said, this is on the house for you guys, a Fago machine. They dropped it off at our warehouse. Every, wow. No discount, no nothing. <laughs> Everything else is right back to normal. You know what I mean? But we got that thing on machine. We got that thing on machine. <laughs> what's what's on the horizon? What what kind of plans for the future do you guys have? What what's what's we're, what's do, we're doing a we're doing a farewell tour. You know, we're doing a farewell tour. Um, uh, this winter we're going to Australia, and uh, next summer we're gonna do the U.S. and Canada. Maybe just the U.S. and then, um, you know, but eventually we're getting everywhere. You know, uh, United States, Australia, uh, Europe, and um, Canada. That's everywhere for us. We don't go to Japan, you know. We've always worked exactly as much as we want to every year. We've always figured. Everybody's always like, man, you guys should be huge in Japan. And Lost him there for a second. I, I, I think it got hit with the with the fago pop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you okay. There you are. <laughs> Throws up yeah. for a second. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got blasted. <laughs> yeah, I, you you had you had, you, had the, you you froze in quite a pose right there. I said, oh, he got he got slammed with the fago bottle right there. That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you guys are doing a farewell tour. I didn't know about that. Yeah, man, we don't want to tour no more. You know, we play festivals. We we get to play like probably three really big festivals every year. Plus, we have all our our own annual events. We have the gathering, we have Hollow Wicked, we have the Big Baller Christmas party, and we have Juggalo Weekend. Um, so with those, with the festivals, you know, that's all we want to play every anymore, man. We don't want to go out and beat up the freeways anymore and we don't have to do that you know what i mean we've been doing that 30 years man and we're like we're gonna do a farewell tour we're gonna go around one more time and that don't mean we're not playing no more you know we're always gonna do our annual events and we're gonna play big festivals and stuff but we're just not gonna do like another tour and then another tour and all that we're just not interested man i hate the inside of a tour bus you guys well, i mean is it to get not, not to get uh you know 
to personally dump is, is it for for your family lives and, and that for, for, for well yeah and, and getting old you know what i mean like you know like oh, uh, i had trust um, me, look i mean you talk to the man with the gray hair and the gray mustache here now okay <laughs> i just like here chilling you at home you know? i like chilling at home watching youtube pet my dog you know what i mean i don't yeah. want to get out and we don't have to like do that anymore you know we've done it so many times i mean i can't even remember how many tours we've done over the years you know three a year at least yeah. every year you know what i mean so i yeah. can't even yeah you know it, it's just like i'm good with staying home <laughs> i hear <laughs> that that, you know? that that is the novelty i i, I know what you're saying is that it's like you get on the road so much i mean i i always told people i live out of a planner and, and, and to begin with and it's like there's sometimes when you when you're waking up in the morning as you're looking around, it's kind of like going, where am I at today? I and I have to look at my portable brain just to know where am I at and what is my function. You know, that's uh yeah. After a while, it doesn't matter where you are. Yeah. It's all just work, you know. Yeah. And and for for us, the hour and twenty minutes on stage was worth it every night but it was the rest of the day that sucked you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. like like just sitting there waiting to go on and then when you paint up then you got the butterflies for hours waiting to go on you know just it, it didn't matter where you are because you're just inside the bus you know what i mean yeah and, and, and unless you want to hang at your hotel room you know and we don't sightsee or nothing we just got, always got to go you know we're there what time's bus call two in the morning oh damn you know you get off stage you gotta be in the bus at two you know it just you get tired of all that, man. You know what I mean. But that 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 hour and twenty minutes on stage is it makes it worth it, you know. But the rest of it is just getting beat up, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, how about the wrestling, Jay? Is that something you guys are going to get more involved with? Is that uh, the music slows down? Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, yeah, because it's like my hobby. It's one of my passions. You know, we run JCW. We have a taping coming up uh, uh, May third in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, for our new YouTube show called Lunacy, you know what I mean? We got a lot of greats coming in for that. Trevor Murdoch, Kerry Morton, um, just a lot of really, really, really cool guys are coming in for that. And um, and uh, so, yeah, we, we keep it going, man. We've been running JCW forever, man. I mean, so damn long. Over, over 20 years we've been doing JCW, you know what I mean? Constantly. Like, it, it runs every year at least three shows, you know what I mean? So it stays... Even like, because throughout the years we've waned and got into wrestling and got back out of it and got into it, you know what I mean? But sometimes more than others. But even on our most uninvolved time, JCW still does three or four events a year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, I know we talked a little bit about it when we first started the show, but like when I reached out to you and, and asked about coming on with Dan, he was like, holy shit, he's a legend. Yeah, I'll come. Uh, uh, I could tell you are a fan of wrestling. You love pro wrestling. Could you tell everybody just how deep that love for pro wrestling is? Well, it's a, it's a love for MMA too, you know. Oh, I really? love combat. Yeah, oh yeah, I love combat sports, you know. I'm not into I'm not into as many of the uh new guys in, in MMA today just like in wrestling because when you get older, man, there become so many guys. <laughs> you know, it's like it's a steady unflux of new guys. You know what I mean? All the time, you know. And unless you keep really glued and focused, you, you can lose track. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, yeah. So I'm not. I'm not as into current. I mean, I check out the big big shows, but um, I I uh, I love MMA in in combat sports, man. And, and Dan, we have a a, friend, a mutual friend, Napoleon Bonaparte. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so he, that he, guy I, is I would like, hilarious. I'd actually like to man. meet that, that young man there sometime because he uh, he did a phenomenal job uh, doing doing some pieces. I mean, I kept thinking I'd just like to meet him sometime. Just say thanks, you know. Me too. Me too, man. He's a, a very talented dude, man. Yes. Like I, that's another thing weird about getting older. I didn't expect. I didn't expect to be so influenced by the younger generation. Like when I see kids like him coming up and killing it like that, man, I'm like, in, I'm influenced by that. Like it's inspiring. You know what I'm saying? I'm inspired by that. You know, I didn't expect to think that, that it would be like that. But like, you know, like you were saying, Dan, you know, we come from a time when there was only three or four channels. You know, I like seeing these kids on YouTube put it together and do the narration and edit it together, no matter what it's about, MMA, wrestling, or Bigfoot, you know? Yeah. I'm ins I'm inspired by watching these uh, creations that kids are putting together in their bedrooms, man. You know, young college students and shit 
murdering it, man. And that really makes me happy. Like, I enjoy watching that. And I didn't expect that about oh, getting older. You know what I mean? I didn't expect to be so happy with the youth of today, you know? Like, um, when I was a kid, everybody was saying homophobic slurs everywhere, you know? And, and, and it just seems like today's youth are... They're not having that, you know, they're not having things. They're not having bullies. Like when I was a kid, I'd get bullied all, all the time. seems like kids today will come up and be like, why are you acting like that, dude? You know what I'm saying? The other uh -huh. kids will come up and be like, why, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? You know, like, like kids today are less, you know, they just seem more woke. You know what I mean? And I like it. It's inspiring, you know, and, and um, I didn't expect that, man. But yeah, I like, I like seeing uh, YouTube. I, I like it because it's people to the people. You know what I mean? It's not an, a, a, a network saying, no, you can't air that. No, you can't say that. You know, yeah. YouTube is somebody making the whole show right in their home and, and presenting, it. you know, with no middleman. And I like that, man. And people are free to make jokes and be funny or however they want to do, man. And all that inspires me, man. That's why I spent so much of my life now watching YouTube, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jay, you said you got bullied as a kid? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were super poor, you know what I mean? We were we were okay. poorer than the other kids in our neighborhood, you know what I mean? So like me and my brother would trade our clothes, you know what I mean? And and they would they would make fun of that and stuff. Um and uh, I used to get into fights all the time, man. My whole crime record is fights, you know. Even as an adult, you know, you're you're out in public, you you, you know damn man, people want to test you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, that's why I, I celebrities learned, need, you yeah, know. I, I actually had I actually had to learn to do I, I used to go to sports bars and stuff like that, and I if I if, if I started to change the time to much earlier in the evening because if you go later, uh, the patrons they partake in the, too many they of them are saucy. Like, they get a little saucy. Like, yeah, they're thinking, I thought you'd be bigger. Okay, you 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 don't look so mean and, and like uh, you know, like going, you know. That's what I'm saying. So and, and I'm not in the fight business, but it's the same type of thing. You know, yes. kid comes up to me. I'm, I'm working in a jukebox. Kid comes up to me and he's like, hey, man, I, I like some red hot chili peppers and I like some Nirvana, but I always thought you guys suck, you know, something like that. And I was oh, like, really? say it again. You, know, you know what I mean? No. I was like, say it again. And he said it again, you know. And it's like, that's what I'm saying. People, oh, 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 people just want to test you. You know, they get sauced up and they're, they see the attention you're getting. You know what I mean? Sometimes we'll be in a strip club and there'd be a, a table of four dudes just me mugging us. And we're like, look at all these girls in here. Why are y'all staring at us? You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and people just want to test you. You know, they don't like the attention you're getting. They don't like the DJ saying, hey, we got these guys in the house or whatever. And they just get drunk and they get angry, you know. I always wondered why when I was a kid, I seen the local news guy, Bill Bonds, at a Red Wing game, he had a big bodyguard with him, and I'm like, who's messing with Bill Bonds? You'd be surprised <laughs> when people get soft up at a hockey game. Hey, oh, Bill yeah. Bonds, fuck you! you know? <laughs> <laughs> it happens, you know what I mean? No, I mean, <laughs> alcohol makes people a lot braver. That's, it, it just, oh, it yeah. just does. You know, it, they lose, a lot of people lose their inter inhibition, so, you know. No. Well, it, so, yeah, you, you got to be careful. Did you have any problems with any of the wrestlers getting respect when you went into that industry? Man, you know, let me, let me clear this up. The other day I heard a, um, okay, the Headbangers, right? We yeah. were doing a program with the Headbangers in WWE, Nash and Thrash, you know? And um, so we were supposed to go in the ring and get beat up, right? They beat the shit out of us, okay? We know the difference between work and, and not, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, we were beat up bad, you know what I'm saying? They came in the locker room afterwards, and they were like, everything cool? We were like, all good. You know, but we knew what happened. You know what I mean? So I um, I heard Mosh on, a, on something the other day, a podcast or something, and he was saying that they told him they're asking for more money, and they're not getting it. So this is their last match. And uh, so go out there and send them, send them out the right way, wow. you know? Right? That's what he said on this interview. But, man, that is not true. I don't like seeing people lie. I don't I like seeing grown people lie. You know what I mean? Maybe, now, let me, let me rephrase that. 
He may have been mistaken. You know what I mean? He may remember the situation different. But that definitely was not, when they beat our ass, that was not our last day in WWE. We were there for like another month. You know what I mean? And it was definitely not, a, we were not asking for anything about money ever. We were asking for our commercial to be aired. You know what I mean? Sure, we didn't sure. have no need for money. We were playing six other nights all over the country. You know what I mean? We were like, we just wanted the, the uh, um, help for the record sales. You know what I mean? Anyway. So I, and these guys are my friends. I just saw them at Billy in Billy Corgan's NWA like three months ago. You know what I mean? And now and I, and they're like, you still telling that story about us beat you up? I'm like, hell yeah, it's what happened. You know what I mean? And they just <laughs> laugh, you know. But um, I heard them say that on the podcast, and I'm like, man, that is not the truth, man. Like I'll say the truth if it's embarrassing or anything. They beat the hell out of us, but we weren't trying. We we get it. We you know, like you said. How did they put us in there so quick at that level? You know what I mean? We understood people are like, these guys don't even belong here. These guys are rappers in here, out here wrestling guys and trying to look tough. We're going to show them what the hell's up. We expected that. We understood that. You know what I mean? But the only thing that bothered me about that is him saying that we were asking for more money and all this stuff, and they beat us up on the way out. That's not what happened. We ended up joining the damn headbangers. We ended up turning on the oddities and joining them. You know what I mean? So how does that even make sense, you know? Yeah, but anyway, I, I just I just get yeah. that off my chest because well, yeah. we, we don't care about money, man. We weren't asking for more money or nothing like that. We don't play the game like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so it wasn't true, and, and, and it felt hurtful to hear him say that. So I want to just yeah. clear that up. But you, you, that's you, the only you, guys we ever had in trouble with, you know? Yeah, you, you think that the creative team should have ideas. I mean, if they're going to bring people on in, this creative team should have some, some basic ideas, at least be able to offer up a few different ideas. It. It struck me kind of odd because I did not realize how much control I had over my, my character. I kept thinking, gosh, you got this this multi-million dollar corporation at that time that uh, they should know how best to use me or something like that. But th really, they didn't. You know, I, I yeah. was actually very happy that they stuck like Jim Cornette with me because Jim Cornette was my mouthpiece. He was the one that was saying he's a NWA this, he's a UFC that. So all I had to go out there is simply just, just – do batches, you know, and, and hey, just, just dismantle people. So that was my whole shtick was that I actually had a hard time finding people that knew how to actually wrestle. They, they, they can all punch. They can all chop. They can they can kick. They can do that kind of stuff. But very few wrestlers really know how to wrestle. And right. to me, it's like going, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to school you because I'm, I'm, that, that, I'm that old school uh type of soul that uh, I, I'll take it to the ground. You work your four way back up the feet, switch out. I mean, it, it just, I, I enjoy the wrestling did you work, of wrestling. Did you, did you work William Regal? Yes, I did. Oh, and, yeah. You can wrestle, right? No, no, I mean, honestly, and again, I'll try to keep, it's a long story, but, but to give like the Reader's Digest version, he, there, there was something happening in his life that and, and was, was, wasn't, wasn't good. He and I did not get a chance to go over the match at all. I mean, an hour before the, the show, they sent someone up to try to find him in his room and stuff like that. They couldn't. There's nowhere to be found. When literally, wow. when when they were announcing our match, he was sitting in a chair in his underwear with one boot on, and 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 basically in no condition to do a match. I get you. And yeah, they I and, and they and they sent me out first. And then uh, they they played his music probably I don't know two three times before he finally comes out. You know he's aiming for the ring, but he's kind of listening to the left. He's listening to the right. Oh. He gets out there, but now to his credit, the moment that we tied up, it was like autopilot. It kicked yeah. right into where he's done so many matches, and the fact that he and I we we just clicked. We we, we put in probably I don't know about a twenty plus minute match and i mean i i give him all to all due credit that that he really he, he was a true professional and and, and all, on all the, that sense right there it just it was just a, a bad time in his life what he was going through and and right. kind of drowned in his sours or just a little bit there but you know i give him credit he pulled off a a, a five-star match that's cool done. man hell yeah jay who's that's been one of your favorite people to wrestle against Man, well, you know, I like wrestling uh, Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio. And, um, you know, because they were both light and I could throw them around, you know what I mean, and, and play the big guy, you know. And um, Eddie was, we were super cool with both of them, you know. Working them was a lot of fun. We probably worked them the most in WCW. 
most times. Um, but I also liked wrestling. And, you know, I watched a couple of our matches on, with, on, um, on, on YouTube the other day from TNA. I'm more yeah. impressed with our wrestling in TNA than anywhere. I thought we did a good job, man. Like, I was watching. I was like, man, how was I not blowing up? You know what I mean? I was watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's so old, you know what I mean? The footage, I was like, man, I can't believe I still I still had it at that age, you know what I mean? Because I was going in TNA, man. We we just, we, we've been so lucky, man. We got to wrestle literally, literally everybody, you know, with the exception yeah. of like, you know, but we got to do like, like I got to get a stone cold stunner, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. I, got, I got to do a thing with Goldberg. Goldberg grabbed me and threw me into a box. And after he grabbed me, my hatchet man charm was folded up like that. All the diamonds were popped out of it. <laughs> he grabbed my whole charm and just crushed it like aluminum foil. <laughs> um, but, like, we had so many cool, cool experiences wrestling these guys, man, you know, working with them and stuff, man. He, we, when, I always use this as an example, but it's something I remember distinctly. Vampire would be in the ring, right? Me and Shaggy would be outside waiting to tag in the six-man tag. We're look, me and Saggy are outside. You hear the guys sometimes. I mean, you see the guys talking to each other outside. You wonder what they're saying. Yeah, you know, yeah. I can tell you what me and Saggy were saying. Can you believe this shit, bro? Look at this arena. <laughs> I don't remember the spots. What were the spots? I don't know. Just go with it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's great. That's what we were saying the whole time. We were out of the ring. How fucking cool is this? You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. I had a lot of fun. And, and, and some, when, when they'd have like a, a four, five, six man tag or something like that, there were so many people sitting out on the ra- apron ready to go out. And we would be out there just talking, telling stories, talking to each other, having yeah, jokes. Having fun. And, yeah, like, and, messing and, with and also try, guys try to come over to, to, to take you in and then just turn your back to them and you carry on your conversation <laughs> with, with the other guy and just, just kayfabe them. <laughs> yeah, man. We had uh, so much. Like uh, uh, one time we were wrestling three count on a house show and um, they weren't there yet. You know what I mean? And they just sent us to the ring, and they're like, we don't know what we're going to do. You know what I mean? It's the like same type of thing. They're playing the music over and over. And three cow came running out in their street clothes, man. They just showed up, and they just came out in their street clothes. We started. We had no plan, nothing. We didn't know who was going over. Same type of thing. You know what I mean? We wow. just were going. It was so crazy, man. Now, who was, was three count again? Was that the the, the It was Evan Courageous. Thing? Evan Courageous. Um, uh. Of course, uh, Hurricane Shane Helms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought it was. Okay. Yeah, and uh, what's the other guy's name with the Mohawk? Shane's boy. Uh, I can't mm. remember. Can't believe I can't remember his name. He was in the WWE with him, same type of thing, Mohawk, and you know, like a like a spiky Mohawk. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, man, they, they they were great to wrestle with them, man. We had so much fun uh, tearing it up with them, going off the cup and having fun. You know what I mean? Doing funny ass spots and sh- you know all that. It was great, man. Oh, I was gonna tell you, um, we um, you know how you always hear about these infamous backstage fights? You know what I mean? Like things yeah. that happen and they're notorious. Something happened I never heard about I, that I saw. Right? It, it was before the doors open. Guys are in the ring working out or whatever working this by side or whatever. And Evan Courageous was standing on this side of the guardrail and Goldberg was on this side of the guardrail, right? Evan Courageous has his hands in his sweats, cupping his balls. You know what I mean? He walks up and says, what's up, man? Pulls his hands off his balls and goes to give Goldberg a dap. You know what I mean? Goldberg doesn't do it. There's some kind of exchange. Suddenly I see Goldberg grab Evan Courageous by the neck, lift him up. (laughs) Over the um the rally. guardrail, yeah, and literally choke slam him on the cement right there, like like. And Evan Courageous just got back up, you know, scrap his neck and running. You know what I mean? I don't know what happened, but I seen a man get choke slammed for real on the concrete. You know what I mean? And it was like Evan Courageous, like, you see what happened? I'm like, yeah. He's like, man, I'm gonna sue sue WWE. Will you be a witness? I was like, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see nothing. <laughs> that was really stupid, though. So he was cuffing his balls. 
Yeah, he had his hand on his balls, you know, walking up to Goldberg. He's like, what's up, man? Put, drags his hand off his balls. He goes to give him a tap, you know, and Goldberg's like, oh, man. And then I think Edwin Craig just said, oh, well, fuck you then, or something playing or whatever. Goldberg didn't like it already because he had his, you know, did the whole thing. And Goldberg snaps him by the neck and lifted him over that guardrail, slammed him on the, on the outside of the ring. You know what I mean? Wow. It was rough, man. Is that version of the I don't think movie? I would have been shaking his hand either, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no way. But no. I, I always, I saw, we saw that, you know what I mean? And I just never hear nothing about it, you know what I mean? But uh, quite a few people probably saw it because there's probably at least 30 people milling around close to the ring, you know, in their stands and stuff, just chilling, just watching, you know. Jay, uh, I appreciate you coming on so much. We're, we're about to have to wrap it up. But really quick before we go, I heard you say something about uh, doing something with Billy Corgan's NWA. He's one of the other yeah. people that came from the music field and has a very big love of pro wrestling. Do you, is there any synergy or any like uh, anything going on, you know, with the wrestling between you guys? Yeah, we're friends, you know. He, I, I, I did a run with them, you know what I mean? I, I, um, we kind of stopped. And we kind of finished the program. We did a, a program with Vampiro there. You know what I mean? I was managing the brother of Fun Struction, brothers of Fun Struction, and the clown tag team. And they were man. Uh, Vampiro was managing La Resistance. And we had a whole program there, and we kind of concluded the flu- the feud in a six man tag team on the pay per view. You know, so I'm kind. I think I'm done with them for right now. We did that program. It was cool. Like I like to get in and get out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But. I, I like NWA, and if they wanted me back, I'd love to come back. You know what I mean? But um, it, it, I like to, you know, it's always been that way with us in wrestling. We don't stay anywhere too long. You know what I mean? Which is which is all right with me. You know? Yeah. Hey, one more one more question before we leave. Um, Dan, uh, um, you didn't want to do the uh, brawl for all, huh? Well, no, no, no. I mean, it was kind of ironic when. When they had this concept for Brawl for All, they brought all the talent into the cafeteria area. And then as they're starting to talk about this, they said, the only two people that will not be allowed in the Brawl for All right. is Ken Shamrock <laughs> and Dan Sarah. They didn't want Of course. Okay. Of and course. Then, well, as soon as they said that, I had one of the road agents kind of standing close to me. I said, well, if I'm not in this, I go, do I need to be in here and listen to any more of it? And he goes, no, I said, you, you can go. So I just left. And this, this goes on for like, two, three weeks, and then all of a sudden, one night where I'm sitting in the locker room just kind of waiting to see, am I going to am I gonna do a match or not, you know? Will I be hit, hit with the eraser? And then all of a sudden, one of the road agents comes up to me, goes, he goes, how would you like to be in the, the bra for all tonight? I go, against who? How much? They said, Godfather, they threw a price tag. I go, sure, but I go, I don't want to wear any boxing gloves. And they're like, well, you can't go bare knuckle. I go, I will never throw a single punch. I will show you what a real wrestler can do. But they, they forced me to put on uh, the gloves. And I, I yeah. even even in, after after the fact, I almost wish I would have went out there and just would have told the ref, hey, ref, take the gloves off. It's all part of the shtick what's about to happen. You know? <laughs> right. The referee would have been no, wouldn't have been not clued in onto it right there. But yeah, I, I just basically just did, did all these, I did all these takedowns stuff like that. I win the match. As soon as I went back, got past the curtain again. The exact same road agent comes up to me and says, you're now out of the deal again, bra for all again. It's like what my gut tells me is that you had you had people in charge, higher-ups that were playing God with other people's livelihood uh-huh. and saying, oh, I think this guy's a bad, badass. Oh, no, I think this guy's a badass. No, and and – and what had happened is because the whole thing was supposed to be for uh, the introduction of uh, the football player from uh, Oklahoma, uh, Steve. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 Steve, yeah, Williams, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Steve Williams. And, 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 and that backfired. So, again, it just professional wrestling. I always say I give kudos to professional wrestling. It's an incredible athlete still some of those incredible athletic maneuvers. But there is a predetermined outcome. That's how these. These weekly shows are leading up to these monthly pay-per-views. That's what it's what WCW is doing. That's what uh, WWE is doing. AEW, all of them are doing the same type of a program right there. That's how they that's how they cash in on all this stuff. They can't have that's people the only, yeah. So that's the only thing that sucks with wrestling is is it's somebody else's decision how far you get. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, and if you got is. a personal grudge or you guys have disagreeing chemistries, it can hold you down for years. 
You yeah. know what I mean? And, 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 and But there's been different times in the uh, industry, like the WWF, for example, that you had certain people that were involved in that industry that uh, you know, they, 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 they're – that or dipped into a different body of water altogether. And if you wanted to get a push to the top, you better watch out who's standing behind you. That's right. So again, this guy That's going, right. you know, that I always tell people, homie, don't play here on that one right there. I go, I, I, I like the opposite sex, not the same sex, <laughs> opposite sex. Okay. That's right. <laughs> hey, Jay, uh, t- tell us your links, man, where everybody can check yeah. out that, uh, that. At Bon and J, at Bon and J dot ICP, man. Follow me. I'm on Insta. And we're everywhere else. I can stay in clown posse. Yep. Awesome, Easy man. Fine, well, brother. I thank you guys, man. That was fun, man. But by the way, I mean, this is, I, actually, I, I, I really enjoyed this tonight because, like I said, I, I had those two different experiences coming out to the gathering and stuff like that. I mean, they were, they were, I, I very, very memorable. I remember so many different albums because it was like the strangest show ever that it started so late <laughs> and then to see. Fago pops, blasted people, and then you know, referee in a match, and and and, and Shamrock get mad at me, and, I, and then as soon as, as soon as someone gets blasted off the top rope, and their whole their whole match simply disintegrated. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> it happens at the gallery. Yeah, <laughs> but that's all that matters. So that's I enjoyed right, it very much, Father Jay. Hope to see you on the road. Thank you guys. Somewhere along we'll the line. See you, man.